Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you guys, of course, as you can tell from the title, you know that thing right there. Um, I'm going to be doing my review on the Juvia's Place Concealer and Foundation. And I said that backwards, foundation and concealer because that's how you apply them. Um, so I got my hands on this about a week and a half ago. Of course, I work every day, so this is me getting ready for work. So I've already moisturized my skin. We're just pretty much gonna get to it. Um, the claims on this is that it's a soft, velvety finish and it retails for, I'm in my feelings, because I didn't get the powder. And I would have loved to test it out with the powder, but whatever. So it comes in 42 shades, at least on the website. And I love that, well, because Juvia's Place is black owned beauty. Beauty Baker did the same thing, where the lower the number, the darker the shade. And my phone isn't at its brightest, but it, you see a good array of color here. I haven't seen too many reviews on it. Of course, I always watch my girl Sandwich. And literally the day that I bought it was the day that I saw her review. Like I bought it and then I saw her review and I was like, <laughs> I was eyeballing the shade 630 and 600. The shade 630 is Capri. And I was also, I think I was looking at, yeah, the Capri 630. And I ended up getting Cairo 600. Um, I'm not sure how their shade matching system works. It does not seem very accurate, if at all. So um, I ended up picking the shade that the model, oh my we matching oh um anyway i ended up picking the shade 600 going by what the model looked like i did swatch it on my hand when i received this so hello snapchat fam i love you guys so much so i'm gonna go ahead shake this up take it out of the packaging shake it up we're just gonna get ready so it says it's long lasting all day wearability i magic foundation was designed for all skin tones from the deepest dark to the fairest fair I always think there's room for improvement. I know people are like, are oh, 100 shades too much with the whole Pure Cosmetics ones? But no, it's not. No, it's not. There's a lot of undertones and colors and who wouldn't want to have that perfect shade anyway? Apparently like a velvet matte finish. And yeah, for $20, I don't think that's a horrible price. I think that's right up there with like the higher end drugstore. Um, so it's not too, too bad. Um, and I also picked up the concealer. This is the I Am Magic Concealer. And holy shit, is this tube. It's huge. I picked up the shade 20. Now, when I saw Sandwich's video, I just called her Sandwich, like Sandwich. Um, 20 looked almost like her skin complexion, which was weird. But on the swatches online, it just seemed like it was more suited for what I look for. I don't look for something that's super brightening. It has 10 ml, so 0.34 fluid ounces. Um, my ColourPop, for instance, has five grams of product. This has 10 milliliters. I think milliliters and grams are the same shit, to be honest. Yeah. Whew. So this has like triple, I mean, it does look triple the size. This, again, has 0.34 fluid ounces. This has 0.176 ounce. Um, my Milani one here is 5 ml, so it's 1.17. So this is like a standard size. Um, the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear, which I really don't care for this concealer too, too much. It's not horrible though. This is 0.33 fluid ounces. So this is just about very similar. And I paid $14 for the concealer, which I don't think it was bad at all. So for a concealer and foundation duo to get it for 34 bucks, I thought that was a great deal. So I've already moisturized my skin. I'm gonna actually go in with my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, which I finally got, I don't know, weeks ago at Ulta, finally. So I just take a little bit on my nail I don't take much. This is literally all the product that I take. I don't like putting too much primer on my skin because I feel like the point of primer is just to apply a very thin layer. You still want the foundation to sit on the skin in a sense, you know? So I add a very small amount of primer. All right, now that I have the primer on. <laughs> I'm going to go in with the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation. Um, matte foundations with dry skin are not my friend, but it is summertime, so, and I've moisturized my skin, taking care of it throughout the day. I'm going to go in with 
a dot, which is probably too much. It feels very creamy. Oh, I put too much. I can tell you guys, I put too much. This feels, you could feel the pigment. I know I'm a weirdo for saying that, but I can feel the pigment. I'm going and put a little bit closer to my under eye. So I'm putting it on the center of my face. So it looks like it's oxidized right here on my skin. So anyway, I'm gonna go in with my, it's a Japanese spun, uh, brush. Oh my God. And um, I'm gonna assume that you have to work quickly with something that says that they're matte. Hmm. I know you're not moving right now. Wow, that actually has really decent coverage. I don't, I think I applied the right amount. It's like right around my nose. Something about this brush. I'm just gonna take my Sigma brush. I feel like the Japanese brush is as beautiful as it is. It just, it's actually a decent match. Like it matches my neck and it does oxidize a bit from what I can tell from it sitting there. So I think I'm good. I think I got a good shade match as far as skin tone goes. I just switch brushes because I feel like my Sigma one blends out nicer without it pulling product from around my nose. I've noticed that a lot with the Japanese brush there. I'm gonna go in with a sponge. I picked up the sponge at Am on Amazon. Yeah, works okay. I use the flat side to blend my foundation. And I do this because I have dry skin and I tend to like to do this with pretty much any skin type. It helps blend and pick up any excess product, especially around like my drier areas. And it blends any lines of demarcation and stuff like that. So that's a good technique. I think I say that in every damn video. I saw, did I see Nike tutorials? I think I saw like a good snippet of her applying the foundation. And I was like, that's a lot of foundation. <laughs> I think it was like after I bought it. Did I buy it after? I don't remember. She didn't sway me, trust me. Oh, use code WOC for 10% off. And that's the women of color code. I don't think there should be any other code. Ever since I started buying Juvia's Place sporadically, I only use the code WOC. Just saying. So I'm going to go in with the concealer. The foundation is starting to set a little bit. It's not super sticky. It actually feels really nice, especially because you think of like matte of any sort, whether it be velvety, smooth, soft matte or whatever, you expect it to like dry up and like really fast. So this is the lightest I can go. It matches, it's neutral, but with like a tinge of warmth to it, I'm gonna add the warmth back into my face, but I'm gonna go ahead and conceal using the 20 shade. This doe foot applicator is huge, huge. I'm gonna go in right here. This actually looks like a perfect concealer under eye shade for me. I'm gonna dot it right there, right here. And a little bit on my forehead. So I'm going to blend this ASAP on the center of my face. Whoa. Okay. Blend this under the eye. Okay. Oh, she's creamy. She's very creamy. 20 was the... I thought this was going to be too dark because it was like up there on the spectrum. It was like mid-range kind of. Of the spectrum of concealers. Like it wasn't like too light and it wasn't too dark. But I was like, watch it be like too dark on me. It's actually perfect. I'm going to add cream contour or cream bronzer to my skin. I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Makeup Stick Contour Shade in Oaks on You. You could use a foundation. I'm just gonna use this. Like literally just going to do this. All right. And I usually just go in with my brush. 
and press it onto the skin like this. I do the chin first because I've forgotten before. I walked around here like a dumbass with like lines under my chin. Like what the hell is that? And I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to blend out my contour. This is why I don't cream contour. So I just take it with my brush and press it into my hairline and I'm just patting it in and moving it. I'm not like wiping it off um, because you're just gonna remove the product. This uh, wet and wild stuff is quite light even though she looks dark, um, but it's quite light. And I'm gonna add powder, of course, to maximize the warmth on my skin. I just feel like I need it right now because this foundation is fair. Oh, hi, how you doing? She is very fair. I'm bringing it up to my cheeks, by the way. So this is the lightest I can go for a foundation. This is probably a good winter match for me. With my Lori Le Mercier translucent powder and set under my eyes, not too much. I'm just gonna press this under the eyes. I have a full house right now, guys, so. I don't like to set with too many powders, but I'm gonna go in with my Maybelline Fit Me powder in the shade 20. I'm gonna go in with a big old fluffy brush. This is my Royal Atlantico 100 brush. And I'm just gonna go in and set my cheek face area. I would set it with the Laura Mercier, but I feel like it's too light, which I know it's translucent, but on me, I, I could see it. My Anastasia Beverly Hills um, Rich Amber, which is probably too red tone, but at this point, what can we do? I'm gonna go in with Floofy strokes. <laughs> it's definitely gonna add the warmth, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah, I needed that. I needed the warmth added back into my skin. I'm gonna go in with my ABH Brow Wiz Gel, Dip Brow Gel. And I'm just gonna go in actually lighter than I've been going and just hit up the front like so and then I'm gonna take my brush and grab at whatever product I just placed and blend it this is my favorite way to use the um, dip brow gel it's just my favorite way to use it now for eyes, I have the new Zulu palette and I'm just gonna do like a brown smoky shade, like just something simple because I'm gonna wear a new lip and I'm again gonna wear a vibrant uh, wig today. So we just not gonna do all that. All right, so I'm gonna go in, hmm. I'm gonna go in with this pinky shade right here on the bottom. It's, she's very, very bright, but I'm gonna just put it as a transition shade very light transition shade. I'm just gonna take my Sonia Kashuk, they need to make this brush again, 109 brush, and just take it above my crease, because again, I want something like a transition, because I'm gonna go in with the brown. I'm just gonna go in with the brown, but I want some pop of color. And I just wanna use one palette. I'm that kind of girl that just likes to use one palette. I don't like to dip into too many shadows. And oh my God, this one little bit of product is like very, very beautiful. And same brush, I'm gonna go into this darker brown. And this one I'm just gonna go a little bit heavier and we're just gonna go in on the crease and take this up. This is a very warm, orangey brown. That's weird. I might need to go to another palette because <laughs> I can't use that, that dark purple. With my Smith 220 brush and add the same brown under the lash line just to add a warm transition as well because I'm gonna add a black. I'm just gonna have to add like a really dark, dark brown or a black. Yeah, blush. Ooh, I'm gonna take my sponge 
and add my cream blush, which I didn't add. Oh, someone got to my cream product. And just press it onto my skin because I like to put my blush like that. There we go. In the middle of doing my eyes, I forgot that I didn't add blush. I wanted to. This look is sure as hell calling for it right now. I'm gonna go in with my Milani Soft and Sultry palette because there's some cool tones in here. I'm gonna go in with this middle brown shade. Um, I'm gonna use the same Sonia Cash brush. Wipe it on my pants. I'm gonna go in with this shade in the middle because it's dark, but there we go. It's not like pure black, it's like a smoky brownish black and that's what I was kind of looking forward to, I don't know. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm working it on the same spot that I applied it in and then blending it so that it looks more like a gradient, which that's the point. <laughs> I'm gonna take my 220 brush, same color, popping it on the first half. Like so. I'm gonna take my blending brush and blend under my eyes. I could do this, I have big old eyes, so I don't mind to grunge it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go back into the Zulu palette and I'm gonna take this color right here, which is like a very pretty pinky duochrome color. All right, I'm trying to find a brush to apply with. I'm gonna take my Smith 253 brush. Just gonna take this color and wet it one time and apply it because I know there's gonna be fallout on my face, so I don't want it. I don't want it. So, I'm gonna spritz my brush and just go right into the center of the lid with it. Take it on. It's, there's still fallout, doesn't bother me. I just don't want. I don't want the maximum. This brush is perfect. It's precise enough. You could take it with a wet or dry product. And I'm just taking it and kind of patting it on the outer area so that it's blended already. I don't have to go back in with my brush because there's a stark line or anything like that. I just take a pencil and dip it into my cream color and go on the waterline, press, and then tight line. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my mascara and a brown lip liner and then come back and do the lip with you guys on camera, of course, the Okay. What was I gonna do for lips? Okay, so for lips, I'm going to do my Fenty Beauty Unbutton Liquid Lipstick. I love this lipstick, it's one of my favorite nudes. I'm just gonna rip, I think it's time for me to get rid of the box. I have all three of them in the box still, and I'm actually going to do a declutter video where I'm decluttering a lot of lipsticks of brands that I no longer use and colors that I really care for. So anyway, I'm gonna go in, I've applied a brown, a brown, duh. A brown lip liner that could possibly be an eyeliner or whatever. Now we're gonna highlight. And for highlighter, I'm gonna go back in with my Vive Cosmetics. This is Latina owned. I'm gonna go in with Reina. I'm gonna take one of my AOA Studio brushes. I want to just keep the golden kind of theme going. And I'm just gonna take her right there. And there we go. She's not wet, she's just beautiful. Take a little bit under the brow bone. Not too much. How you doing? I spritz my face, homemade fix, well, homemade setting spray. Um, and I'm using my Anastasia. Because I love the spritz on this, it's amazing. Okay, my loves, this is the completed look. I'm ready for work now. <laughs> this isn't about the shadows. We know Juvia's Play shadows are capable of greatness. So this is, of course, of the foundation. This is the I Am Magic Velvet Foundation, and this is 600 Cairo. I do think I can go darker, so I think I'm going to look into seeing if I can exchange it or if I can get another color of it. Overall, I love the way the foundation looks on my skin. It looks put together. It looks pretty matte. I didn't have to set it 
at all if I didn't want to. I did set it with a little bit of a darker face powder so that I can kind of add a little bit more color back into my skin. It wasn't super, super light, but I thought it would oxidize a lot more. It did not. It actually you know, set pretty well onto the skin. It didn't darken too much. So if you're worried about it oxidizing, if you're like of a fairer skin tone, um, with this one right here, it didn't oxidize a completely different shade. It just darkened a little bit, but not enough where it would match me like my neck. Um, but overall, I do think the foundation matched my face, um, which I'm not mad about. The concealer, I actually really, really like. It's very creamy. Um, if you let it sit under the eyes a little bit, it'll give you way more coverage. This is not full, full, full coverage, but the foundation definitely is. I would say it's a full coverage foundation, especially if you like to cake it on. Um, I personally do not, but with the amount that I applied, I got a perfect application. I got actually a high medium coverage. You can still see some of my um, birthmarks, which I'm fine with, um, but my skin evened out beautifully and it actually set really beautifully on the skin. Of course, you guys saw, I had to add a little bit more warmth into my skin because it matched my face and not so much of my neck. So it looked like I was just one tone. And that happens a lot with matte foundations. You kind of just get like a one dimensional look because it just, it's mattifying. Um, I feel like the velvet finish on my dry to normal skin, is pretty good. I don't think it's super drying. I think it sets beautifully and it gives you time to play with the foundation and move it around and place more of it and blend it and all that. It doesn't dry right away, which I can appreciate that. But once it does set, it looks really, really beautiful. I feel like my skin looks amazing. It looks matte, but like natural matte, if you catch my drift. Like it looks like just something more natural, I mean, this isn't a natural beat, but it looks way more natural. So overall, I like the foundation. It's not the end all be all of foundations, but if you're looking for something that's not super expensive, $20 is actually a really great price point for them and you get 10% off, you'll probably end up spending like 19 on it or whatnot. It's not a bad foundation. I think it's really, really good. If you have extremely dry skin though, remember that anything with a matte, even some regular foundations like natural finish foundations do tend to like at you know get attracted to the dry patches so that's a given make sure that if you have dry skin and you really want to try out this foundation that you moisturize you prime you do your skin prep first and then go in with a light hand and build up from there because this stuff is full coverage this can definitely go full coverage very easily i just dotted it on the center parts of my skin and even blending it out i was like oh this is high medium for me with just a little bit of dots pardon the noise from the streets so this right now on me is a high medium i didn't go back in and build it because i don't want full coverage i like a medium to high medium coverage i like it to even up my skin tone which that it did it took away a lot of the redness that i had on my skin you know, hormonal redness, ladies. Um, so yeah, overall, love the foundation. The concealer, I really, really like. And I think the shade 20, if you're my foundation twinsy or concealer twinsy, the shade 20 was perfect. It's warm enough. It's light enough, but it doesn't like make me look like super highlighted under my eyes. So I can appreciate that. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for my review and demo and tutorial on the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation and Concealer. Let me know down below what you guys think of this whole look. Um, let me know if you've tried it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting my big old fluffy self. Uh, I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys in my next video. Love you guys. Bye.